Alright guys, in this video I'm going to explain to you what uh, valence electrons are, what core electrons are, and uh, with that their connections with uh, writing the electron configurations. Now, uh, basically it's like this. Your valence electrons, they do all your work. They do your uh, reacting and chemical reactions, forming of compounds, molecules, and basically your Lewis dot structures. They're, they're the important electrons. Uh, now, all your core electrons do is they basically shield the nucleus from those valence electrons. Anyway, basically it's this. Anything in column number one has one valence electron. Anything in column number two has two valence electrons. Now, a lot of chemistry teachers won't tell you this because this is way too easy. Uh, column number three, believe it or not, if you needed to know these, these would be three valence electrons, four valence electrons in column four, column five, five valence, column six, six valence, column seven, seven valence electrons, column eight, eight valence electrons, column nine, nine valence electrons, and finally column ten, ten valence electrons. Now we're assuming that all of these electrons, these valence electrons for the uh, following basically element are for neutral atoms. They're neutral, meaning no charge. They're not a cation, or basically when we get over here, they're not anions. They're just cation. Uh, they're just neutral. They're not cations or anions. Okay. Now, once again, one valence, two valence, three valence, four valence, five valence, six valence, seven valence, eight valence, nine valence, and ten valence. So basically, once you get past ten here, it becomes one valence electron for column 11. Column 12, two valence. Column 13, three valence, column 14, four valence, column 15, five valence, column 16, six, column 17, seven valence electrons, and column 18 is eight valence electrons except helium. It's the exception. It's only two valence electrons. The reason the helium is here instead of way over here is because even though helium only has two valence electrons, it's a noble gas and it's in that column. Okay. Now, as far as the blues, I'm not going to worry about those, so I'm not ever going to uh, really talk about valence electrons and core electrons on those, but these three sections of the periodic table I am concerned about and I will show you. So let's go over these one more time. Valence electron count, you just use the column numbers to tell you how many uh, valence electrons they are, but once you get at column 11, it just starts over with one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, just remember helium is just two. Now that explains the valence electron counts, how you can figure those out. Now, writing electron configurations, that's a little bit more work. Um, let's just do some as an example. We'll start with the, the first one. We'll start with hydrogen. The valence electron, excuse me, the electron configuration of hydrogen is 1s1. The electron configuration of helium is, guess what? Well, it's in the first row. It's in the pink, so it's one for the row it's in. Basically, you know, the principal column number. It's one. It's in. It's a pink, so it's an S, and it's the second pink, so that's two. Now, if you wanted to do say boron B, it would be one S two, two S two, then two P one. Basically, it's like this. You have to write down the last color and row that you enter, uh, excuse me, that you exit out of. So the 1s2 gets written down because I pass up both of these pinks. Okay. The 2s2 gets written down because I pass up both of those pinks as well. So after that, I'm entering into a new color. So the last color that I write down is my location, the 2p1. Okay. So if I had to do neon, Neon, I pass up, uh, excuse me, I pass up 1s2, so I write that down. I pass up 2s2, but I still end up landing in 2p6, so I write that down. Now the next one I'm going to do is scandium, sc. Scandium, I pass up 1s2. I pass up I pass up 2s2. I pass up 2p6. I pass up 3s2. Uh, I then enter into the 3p, guess what, 6. 
I then exit out of and pass up the 4S2, but I finally land in 3D1. Now the last one is zinc, Zn. Now zinc is basically all these that I just passed that I wrote in Scandium, 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, whoops, 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6, 4S2, and finally 3D10. Now as far as valence electron counts, uh, hydrogen, we know that hydrogen uh, has only one valence electron because it's in column one. Helium, we know as far as valence electrons go, has two. Boron, if you look, is in column 13, so we know it's three. Now let me show you why it's three looking at the electron configuration. If you notice here, the 2s and the 2p, that's our highest energy level, and our outermost orbital, and two and one make three when you add them together. Neon, notice it's in column 18. It's eight valence electrons, but it's eight because if you look at the highest energy level two here, notice that this two and this six add up to eight. Now scandium, if you notice, is in column three, okay, on the periodic table. Now if you look at that, uh, that would be how many valence electrons? Well, it would be three. Now let me show you where they get three. They get two from the outermost orbital 4s, you know, the highest energy level. But if you look, this d orbital is partially filled. If the d orbital is ever partially filled, you count the partially filled uh, orbital and its electrons, meaning you add the two and you add the one and you get three. Now, as far as zinc, if you notice, notice that I told you the trend is this. If zinc is neutral, and it is here, if it's in column 12, it has two valence electrons. Now, if you look, notice that the outer orbital 4s2 has two electrons. But notice that this d orbital is not partially filled. It's completely filled. If it's completely filled, you, not, you do not count it on the total number of valence electrons. So it's actually two instead of 12. Okay. Now, these are some examples. Uh, if you watch the next video, I'll do some more examples of uh, electron configurations and explain valence electrons. But I hope this helps, and I'll also explain paramagnetic and diamagnetic as well in the next video. All right, guys.